Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman. I love mini PCs and we've got another one to check out today. This one from GMK Tech. It's relatively affordable. This one's called the M6 Ultra. It is powered by a Ryzen 7640HS processor. This has six cores and 12 threads. A great machine for doing all sorts of stuff. And we're going to be taking a look at some of the things that you can do with this in just a second. But I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure, this came in free of charge from GMK Tech. However, they did not review or approve what you're about to see before it was uploaded. No other compensation was received, and all opinions are my own. So let's get into it now and see what this mini PC is all about. Now, the price point on this comes in at $379 with 32 gigabytes of RAM. I think that is very reasonable. The price does fluctuate a bit, so definitely keep an eye on the product listing. As I mentioned, this has that Ryzen 5 7640HS processor on board. It's an older chip, but it's quite powerful, especially for desktop computing and home server tasks. I don't recommend these, though, for Plex servers, as Plex tends to prefer Intel-based hardware for transcoding. But if you are just hosting media inside your home, this would do well with Plex and other media servers, too. And it's a very nice little home server at a pretty reasonable price, I think. Now, you have some upgradability on this one, so what you do is pull the top portion of this off. You'll see a cooling fan area here. You unscrew that plastic layer, and then you can get at the rest of the system. It was nice to see that they didn't cripple this processor with single-channel memory, so they do have RAM installed in pairs. Again, 32 gigabytes on the model that we have here, and this is dual-channel memory, so you're going to get the most out of that processor out of the box you can upgrade this to 128 gigabytes of RAM, so you can definitely add some more there down the road. And it is DDR4-4200, uh, at least on my system here, although the system specs say 4800. You also have two NVMe slots. One of those is occupied by the built-in storage that it comes with, but you can add a second NVMe SSD if you wanted to dual boot your Linux applications on here, for example. So like other GMK Tech mini PCs, it is very easy to work on here and add components that you might need to add down the road. Now you also have a good number of ports on board here. You've got your headphone microphone jack here. This Type-C port is a USB 4.0 40 gigabit port. So you can connect external GPUs to this if you wanted to, in addition to using Thunderbolt devices and other USB 3 and 4 and 2 <laughs> devices that you plug into it. Additionally, this will do an 8K display output as well. So it is a mostly full service port, although you don't get power input through this. You have to use the power supply that it comes with. You've got two USB-A ports here that run at USB 3 speeds, a second or third one uh, here on the back. This is a USB 2.0 port. This is where I would plug your keyboards and mice into. You have this, uh, two display outputs here. Both of these will do 4K60. One is an HDMI. The other is DisplayPort. Then you have two 2.5 gigabit Ethernet ports on the back. I did test those out a little bit earlier and I was able to get the full performance of my multi-gigabit internet connection here, both on the downstream and the upstream. It also has a, a Wi-Fi 6 radio on board. That one did not fare as well. I've been seeing on these mini PCs that the downstream on the built-in Wi-Fi is never all that great. So this one should do a little bit better on the download, although it kind of recovered towards the end here, but it was very spotty. Uh, the upload uh, did do okay on this, as it does on some of the other ones that we've looked at. So I would say if you're going to use this for a home server, and you're not hitting it too often, the Wi-Fi is fine, but if you wanted more reliable uh, speeds, then uh, connecting up Ethernet is always the best way to go. And then, of course, you've got your Kensington lock slot on there. It has a fan, as you can see, or at least some uh, air intakes and outputs here. The fan is not all that noisy, even when it's under load, so it's not all that distracting. And most of the time when it's sitting idle, it's pretty quiet on the desk with the fan not running, at least in an audible fashion. Power consumption on this under load is about 90 watts and about 13 or so watts when it's idle. The power supply here has a little bit of extra power budget on board. It goes up to 120 watts 
And that, of course, is to power some of the things that you might plug into it through the USB ports. So all in, a very nice little system here, at least on the hardware side. It is made out of plastic, but again, this is on the more affordable side of the lineup. Why don't we boot it up now and see how it performs? All right, so let's take a look at some web browsing to kick things off. And as you can see here, it is super responsive, very little lag here rendering pages, all very, very good for basic tasks. And this is running at 4K60 out the back of that HDMI port here. So this is a very nicely performing machine. If you're doing your basic work on it, it should be uh, really not giving you much lag or slowdown at all. And I wouldn't expect any given the processor that we've got on board along with all the RAM that we got as well. So here is a 4K60 video playing back from my YouTube channel. It's not perfect. It has dropped a couple of frames here or there but it is not noticeable. So overall, I think if you are playing back YouTube and other media on here, it should be fine without any noticeable lag or slowdown, but it is not perfect as you can see here. And on the browserbench.org speedometer benchmark test, we got a score of 25.1, and that puts this machine pretty much where I would expect it to be, definitely near the top of the pack, at least for these mini PCs. And a little bit earlier, I did some video editing with DaVinci Resolve. This is a 4K60 project. This is actually not bad for light video editing if you're just stringing some clips together and doing some very simple transitions. As you can see here, everything is rendering up in real time and the system is able to keep up. It's the more advanced video effects and color grading that really start to bog this down. So that's where you need a more powerful system. But for the basics, it actually works pretty well. And this is Cyberpunk 2077 running on the mini PC. You're not going to get 60 frames per second out of this, but at 1080p at the lowest settings, we were getting between 30 and 40 frames per second. It is definitely playable as you can see. So that is a good thing. And overall, it can take on a pretty heavy duty game like this. And of course, a lot of older games even better. And you can see here outside, it does a little better when there's less complexity on screen. You do of course have the option to do an external GPU through that USB 4 port on the front. I also ran No Man's Sky, which is my favorite game. This one can be pretty demanding. And here at 1080p, at its lowest settings, we were getting about 30 to 40 frames per second as well. So not a gaming powerhouse, but it's capable of playing games if you are a casual player looking to boot up a game every once in a while. It's also very good for emulation, so it can handle the GameCube and the PS2 along with all of the other retro consoles from the 70s, 80s, and portions of the 90s too. So all in, a very nice little machine here for casual gaming. And on the 3D Mark Time Spy benchmark test, we got a score of 2,623. Graphically, this little mini PC performs as well as an NVIDIA GTX 1050 Ti that we tested on a gaming laptop just a couple of years ago. And of course, the CPU here outperforms the i7 chip that was on that gaming laptop. So this is a very nicely performing machine for its price point. And on the 3D Mark stress test, we got a score of 99.4%, which is a passing grade. This means that you will not see much of a performance reduction when the system is placed under heavy sustained load. Now the PC does come with Windows 11 Pro pre-installed, but of course you can boot up other operating systems. We always like to test out the latest version of Ubuntu, which is what I did a little bit earlier, and everything ran just fine. It seemed to be very snappy and responsive, as you can see here. Uh, no issues with compatibility, so all the hardware was detected properly. So if you wanted to run this as a full-time Linux desktop, it'll work well for that. And of course it will do very well for server tasks too. So altogether, I think this is a very decent little mini PC for its price point. It performs quite well. And even though its Ryzen processor is a little on the older side, it's definitely one of the more powerful variants of that generation of Ryzen chip. And I think you'll get a lot of good productive use out of this one. That will do it for now. Until next time, this is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching.